Hi everybody. So I'm back with more um, testimony. Um, it's been a New York minute since I've been on here and um, a lot has happened. Um, a lot has transpired in the last um, few weeks that I haven't been on. Um, mainly, uh, so I mentioned that I'm on a competition for a cooking um, magazine and I thought, <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, so let's start from the beginning. So. The man that God has for me, the man that he revealed is the real deal, um, walked away because he didn't want to stand in the way of my dreams. And my dream has always been to be a chef. Another dream of mine is to backpack through Europe. I've had that dream since I can remember. And um, he took a step back and he said, you know, you don't need anyone to go with you to follow your dreams. You can do this on your own. And I took a step back and I was like, wait, what? What do you mean doing by myself? That's, that's not the deal. The deal isn't to go by myself. And so I sat with God and I was like, Father, what, what's going on? What I don't understand. And this was my Genesis moment. This is my Genesis 22 where Abraham was asked by God to sacrifice his dream of having a son. And Abraham's obedience to God was what saved his son and allowed God to provide a ram in the bush. God already knew I would be willing to give up my dreams for this man that I'd be willing to sacrifice what I wanted to be with the man he chose for me. And so I did. I said, Father, I can't change his heart. I can't stop him from walking away. Only you can. And I said, so I give him back to you. If you if it is meant for you, us to be together, if this is your will, if this is your plan for us, then you will make a way. And so, God had me choose. Would I choose the man he has for me? Or would I choose to follow my dreams? And I said, follow my dreams. You are my dream father. I want to go where you go. I want to do what you want me to do. So I put my dreams on the sacrifice table and God said I passed the test. <laughs> I'm like, what? Because <laughs> I had no idea that's what this was about. Like I had no idea that this was my Genesis moment. That this was the moment that God was going to use to test my heart to see who I wanted more, him or my blessings, my dreams. This man being a chef next to God, it doesn't, if God's not there, then I don't want it. And so God then put, I could feel something bubbling inside of me. And I was like, you want me to what? <laughs> so he put it in my heart to tell this man how I feel about him. And I'm like, but you said no. <laughs> you see, the way that this man entered my heart, the only one who had the key was God because I handed him the key. I said, Father, here's the key to my heart. You protect it. You hold on to it because there is no one else who is better fit to take care of my heart. And when I turned around and this man was inside my heart, I, 
like, how am I in love with him? Like, I did not see him coming. I didn't, like, how did he get in? Father, you had the key. And I was like, wait, you had the key. You let him in. <laughs> it was something I had asked for a long time ago that I completely forgot about. I had asked God that the man that I was to be with, the man he had created for me, would work alongside of me. We both work in the same company doing service. He is a driver, I am a, a cashier. We both provide the same level of service to the people that we meet. He fell in love with my soul, he fell in love with my light, he fell in love with my personality, he fell in love with everything else except my body. Well, not meaning that he doesn't like my body, but it, it wasn't one of the things that he took into account. He likes the way I look. He likes the way I am. He doesn't want me to change. And he told me that. He goes, you look fine. You don't need to work out. You don't need to spend hours in the gym. You're beautiful just the way you are. And I was like, <laughs> okay. God will do whatever he needs to do to get the glory out of it. You think, oh, it's going to go this way. And he ensures that there is no pride, that there is no fear, that there is nothing that isn't his when you walk his walk. The joy that comes out of you is like supernatural. And it's not hard. You make it hard because you're focusing on the things that are not of him, but it's because he's allowing you to. When you turn around, it's like, how, how did I get here? Like, I didn't see this coming. I had no idea. So tomorrow, I am about to take a step off the ledge, off the edge. I'm going to jump. I'm gonna take a leap of faith. And I pray that God and, and this man catch me. And I'm, I'm not afraid. Yes, I was afraid on Monday when I was supposed to talk to him, but God's like, you weren't ready yet. You didn't have the words that I wanted you to speak. You didn't have the level of understanding that I wanted you to have. And between Monday morning or Sunday night when I sent him a text and Monday morning, when I was supposed to speak to him. And the, I, I opened my mouth, but the words wouldn't come. And he saw it. He saw the hesitation. He saw, and I told him, I said, the words are there. I just don't understand why they're not coming out. And he just watches me. And he watched me and he watched me. And I hadn't changed who I was. I hadn't changed the way I felt about him. I didn't change my behavior towards other people. And he realized that when I was around him, I was tongue-tied. When I was around him, I was quieter. When I was around him, I was less loud. When I was around him, I asked questions. I looked to him for guidance. I didn't ask anyone else for their, their guidance. I didn't ask for their advice. I didn't ask for their two cents. Because the man that's supposed to lead me is the one I'm supposed to go to and submit to. And I've been doing that without realizing that's what I was doing. And so now, now that I'm here, now that I'm ready to take that leap, now that I'm ready to jump into the into the quote-unquote abyss and pray that this man catches me, pray that God catches me, because I know God's not going to let me fall. God wouldn't put me on this path only to demise everything he's worked so hard within me. I haven't seen this person in a very long time. Like, my face is recognizable to me now. I see in the mirror the person that I want to be. And I haven't been working out. I've been eating like crazy, especially with this competition. I've been feeding him. I've been feeding myself. 
But supernaturally, God has taken the weight away. And it's a, a promise that God had made me. Because I asked him, I said, Father, I don't want the weight to come off until he can show me that he's in love with me the way I, even with the extra pounds. And I kid you not, since I realized that he is as much in love with me as I am with him, because his actions show me he's in love with me. The way he acts towards me shows me he's in love with me. He hasn't said the words, I love you. But my favorite food to eat at work and anywhere, my favorite food to make for myself, my favorite food that my grandma used to make for me when I was a kid, spaghetti. And he told me, he, I said, why does your spaghetti taste like my spaghetti? How is that possible? And I said, you don't put salt in your water. You don't put oil in your water. I do. How can your spaghetti still taste like mine? And he said, because I make my spaghetti with love. And, and he knows. He knows I've been eating the spaghetti. Like even before I knew that he was the one making the spaghetti, I was telling him. I said, look, this is the spaghetti I made. Back you know, I gave him the date, and he's realized that he's been making the spaghetti since then. And he just smiled. And he goes, okay, so she's eating my spaghetti. She's eating my love. <laughs> and so when I fed him, I was feeding him my love because I cook with love. And it, and I noted, like it was, God brought my attention to his lips. I'm like, what's wrong with his lips? And I noticed that he had like a white, a white film on his lips, which means that he's thirsty. And I was like, wait a minute, my lips have been dry. Like I've been drinking water, I've been drinking soda, I've been drinking, I've been trying to drink as much water as I possibly can. And my lips are still dry, like to the point where I start having to use chapstick because they're so dry. But I couldn't find my chapstick, so I was using lip gloss. And of course, that was really making my lips pop out because I don't wear makeup. And here I have glossy lips. And so I realized that God was bringing my lips to his attention. And we're both just looking at each other like, what is happening to us? Like, neither one of us is the kind of person to be like this. But I've noticed that he's like me in a lot of ways. When he's working, he's very methodical. He's very quiet. He's very focused on the work at hand. When I'm working, I'm very focused at what I'm doing. I don't look, uh, I don't talk to people until I'm done doing what I'm doing. And yesterday, when I was at work with him, he was standing by the oven, and I was talking to him about something all of a sudden he starts like really like and I'm like oh my goodness Holy Spirit is all over him what is God <laughs> this is me thinking what is Holy Spirit telling you to say and you're not opening your mouth to speak <laughs> but so when I got home um, I sat with God and, and I actually went to bed I, I, I had food I had dinner and then I laid down and I went to bed. Well, I didn't go to bed. I was just laying in bed and I was talking to God. And as I'm trying to talk to God, thoughts of him keep interrupting my conversation with God. And I'm just like, I'm getting frustrated because I'm really trying to focus on God. And I said, Father, why, why is it every time I'm trying to focus on you, the person that keeps coming through is him? And he says, because he's now in the lead. Your relationship and mine has changed. I am going to lead you through your husband, but I needed you to know my voice. I needed you to know the way I work so that if your husband starts to lead you in the wrong direction, you will come to me and ask me for guidance and bring you both back into alignment with me. And I was like, what? What? <laughs> 
And so when God said, cast your net out again, this was back, back a while back. I thought I was trying to catch one man, but in reality, God was trying to catch another man. And I was like, then why did you have me? And he goes, because you wouldn't open your heart. This man was sharing his son through videos, through pictures. And nothing softens a person's heart more than a child, especially mine. I love children. I would have had 23 children if my ex-husband had been a man of God. I wouldn't have stopped having children. I would have received as many children as God wanted me to have because that's how big my heart is. That's how big my, my father has created my heart to be. And now that I'm here, now that I'm about to cross over, into the land that he promised me, into the position he promised me. I'm, I'm trying to stay um, humble. I'm trying to keep him in the forefront, but it has changed. It has changed in the sense that the guidance that I need is no longer coming from God. I now have to go to my husband and ask him for guidance. And I'm like, I didn't even realize I was doing that until God goes, yeah, our time is up. Sorry, sweetheart. I'm like, no. <laughs> but it's not that I'm not ready. It's that I'm not, I don't want to give up on, I don't want to give up my relationship with God. I don't want to give that one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. But we can't go into our marriage with our same attitude, with our same relationship with God. It has to be in alignment with God's order. And only when we become God's order, God's perfect plan, can we then enter into union in a perfect formation. Because none of us, none of us is greater than God. None of us is better at loving than God. And God has an exact person that will match our every need, our every wish, our every desire. And it'll be better than what we thought. Because this is an individual who's going to hold you accountable. Who's going to hold your feet to the fire and said, this is what you need to do. And this is how you need to do it. And I was like, no. Boss man said I could do it this way, so I'm doing it this way. And he's like, no, you can't. I'm telling you, you can't do it that way. And it wouldn't work until I did it the way he told me, until the way my husband said to do it was the way I did it. And now, <laughs> now I am in alignment. I am following him according to God's will. I am seeking his guidance. I am seeking his advice in everything. Where I used to go to God for God to provide me revelation, for God to provide me information, now I have to go to my husband and ask my husband the question. But before I go to my husband, I've already asked that question of God. And then God gives him the information to give to me. Because that is the perfect plan. That was always the way it was supposed to be. Not by, our, not, by our, not by our understanding, but by His. God is perfect. God is incredible. God is amazing. And if you have an opportunity to give yourself completely over to God, I recommend it. Because this is the time. This is the now. This is the event. This is the thing that is going to change the trajectory of our lives forever. Nothing will be the same. Once I become one with my husband, life on earth will change for the better, for God's children. And you will see it, the resonating effect of the dominoes going on down the line. Perfection attributed to God only. Perfection only God can complete because only God is perfect. 
Only God is omnipotent. Only God, only God, only God. And our Lord Jesus is going to take his reign and he is going to rule with love and understanding over God's people, over his brothers and sisters, over his children. In the name of my Lord Jesus, I pray you find solace. I pray you seek God in this hour because his beauty is magnificent. In the name of my Lord Jesus, amen.